Welcome all to the second Cradle Summit in 2014. I had a couple of situations recently where people expected a somehow different person when I was picked up for a meeting or a presentation. They were looking and looking and I was like, you're looking for me? And I eventually realized that they expected to meet this guy. The photo that is also on the Cradle Summit website. So yes, this is me a while ago and I didn't realize how important a profile photo has become. I had phone calls with old schoolmates telling me how young I'm still looking. I said, well, thank you. <laughs> and then they mentioned that I saw my profile photo. So I need to update soon. <laughs> um, when we had our first Gradle Summit last year, people approached me saying that they couldn't believe how professionally and smooth our first conference was executed and organized. Well, there's a secret source to this. We are very happy that also the second Gradle Summit is run in partnership with the one and only Jason Maman, owner of the No Fluff Just Stuff Tour, as he just mentioned. He did another great job this year to make the summit an outstanding conference experience. So let's give a hand to Jay and his awesome team. <laughs> the motto of Jay's conference, No Fluff Just Stuff, is also very appropriate for the Gradle Summit. Excellent content including many in-depth 90-minute session and just enough breaks to recover and be ready for the next talk. The last one will be at 8 p.m. tonight and tomorrow at 6 p.m. Uh, we are also very excited to have BrightSource, the best conference video production company in the Bay Area, recording this event. There are two cameras in each room and they have a staff of seven people making sure the sessions are recorded in a quality appropriate for the great content we have. And I can guarantee that this year all the videos will be published just a few weeks after the conference. Took a little bit longer. <laughs> yes. No. Okay, so I want to start the actual keynote with talking about the Gradle momentum. Momentum is an important metric for any technology, but for a build platform it is particularly important. The build and automation domain is very conservative, for good reasons. So for conquering the mainstream, the mainstream want to be sure that a new build technology is around in 10 or 20 years. That is often the lifespan of the technologies that we are replacing with Gradle. People in the mainstream also want to be sure that their problems have been successfully solved with the same technology somewhere else. Right? So that means the threshold of entry is very high if you want to become the new dominant build tool. And I'm extremely excited that Gradle has more than mastered this hurdle and I want to share uh, some of the data we have with you. 1.5 million, this is uh, roughly the population of San Antonio, winner of the NBA championship in 2014, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> this is also the number of Gradle downloads in 2014 so far. So I, I think it's an extremely impressive number and just shows the enormous momentum we have. Um, Let's see how Google measures the momentum of the Gradle technology based on their search queries. Gradle is red and obviously you can see a very strong momentum. But also serious substance and volume if you compare Gradle with other established technologies. Let's take one like Cloudera, right, which is in blue. I wouldn't mind if uh, red were also the revenue of Gradle were compared to Cloudera, but not yet. Okay, a good momentum indicator is also the nice library of Gradle books coming mostly from the community. Uh, we have Ken Cousin here at the conference who is the author of the upcoming Gradle for Android O'Reilly book and there are also other books in the making. I discovered recently that Olo.net has grown into a very interesting and complete database for open source project analysis. They include Every project from Chromium, Mozilla, down to uh, uh, the much smaller open source projects. And uh, here's what they say about Gradle. Very high activity. Over the past 12 months, 55 developers contributed new code to Gradle. This is one of the largest open source projects, uh, open source teams in the world. And over the entire history of the project, 124 developers have contributed. So that not just shows the momentum we have, it also shows that though our company Gradleware is a driving force behind Gradle, Gradle is a true open source project, not just by license, but also by culture, with many people getting involved that are not part of the company. 
and we are just talking about the cradle core here. There are also 200 plus community Gradle plugins out there. And they are an essential part of Gradle. The number is growing fast, and we will talk more about this later. Um, Rebel Labs from the J Rebel folks, they published a couple of weeks ago uh, the results of a recent survey, which was about the whole developer tooling ecosystem, including languages, CI tools, IDEs, build platforms, etc. From all technologies covered in that survey, Cradle has the highest number when asked what technology in a particular field you're most interested to learn about. 60% of the 2,000 developers participating in the survey mentioned Cradle in the build tool segment. So that's uh, uh, yeah, very exciting for us, very motivating uh, that the Cradle community keeps growing and growing and growing. At one point, this number will be 0% because everybody will be using Cradle and they don't need to learn about it anymore. <laughs> so to close this section, there has been a Cradle article on the good old server side, finally, a week ago with the title, When Did Cradle Get So Hot? We think from day one, but it's definitely very hot now. So, okay. Speaking about hotness, um, Cradle 2.0 RC1 is out, which means Cradle 2.0 is coming soon. Um, the way we deliver software, having a six to eight week release cycle for every minor release and doing all the work in the master branch, this means that a major release is just another minor release when it comes to new features. But major Cradle releases serve two additional purposes. One is to remove some of the deprecated functionality features uh, uh, to reduce the maintenance load. And the other, uh, it is a means of communicating that the aggregate of all the features since the last major release constitute a major progress that we want to express with a new major version number. So uh, a key theme, a key theme for 2.0 is maturity. Uh, Cradle got hardened by some of the largest builds on the planet. So at LinkedIn, for example, they have a 4,000 sub-module Cradle build executed by 1,000 plus developers many times a day. Uh, there are many organizations, the Android community, where we got a lot of valuable feedback. So Cradle 2.0 is in many ways an evolution of 1.0 plus some very cool new features. So let's take a closer look at the features that have been added between 1.0 and 2.0. So one important area of improvement is performance. We touched many areas of Gradle to significantly improve the raw performance of Gradle for the major usage scenarios. So we have a performance test suite for those scenarios that make sure that for every new Gradle release, there's only one direction for the performance metrics, which is downwards. If you compare the 2.0 performance with the 1.0 performance, we have improvements between 20 and 70%. So the scenarios are clean versus incremental build, projects with large versus small dependency graphs, large and small code bases, imports uh, into IntelliJ or Clips, and so on. So uh, this is a really significant improvement, and um, the same can be said about uh, uh, reducing the memory usage of Gradle. Um, if you compare this uh, 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 with 1.0, the numbers are even higher than the performance improvements, right? Between 20 and 80%. So, on top of the raw performance improvements, we introduced a feature called configure on demand that significantly reduced the configuration time if you do partial builds for larger multi project builds. And we also introduced a parallel builds per sub project execution option to make the Gradle execution faster. Performance continues to be a core focus for the two extreme, and I will talk about that later. Dependency management. We continuously have improved the dependency management capabilities of Gradle to make it the best in the industry. So we introduced dependency resolve hooks to give you a powerful toolkit to model the resolution process according to your custom needs if necessary. And in cooperation with Netflix, we made major progress in creating a generic toolkit to consider any kind of custom metadata you add to your artifacts as part of the dependency resolution process. Further work on dependency management will be another major focus for the two extreme. 
We also introduced a very elegant solution for many task ordering issues. Uh, check it out if you haven't done yet. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's really powerful. It sounds innocent, should run after and must run after, but we think this is a major contribution to the executional model of build systems. We invested a lot of time in improving the tooling API to enable a very deep integration between Android Studio and Gradle. Uh, and this will benefit the integration with any IDE. <coughs> Gradle 2.0 means also that Gradle is now a world-class native build system for C, C++, and Assembler. That is a major new software platform we are fully embracing uh, with, by offering unique capabilities. If you want to learn more about this, uh, Des is giving a talk, uh, I think after this keynote, on that topic. Okay. So before I talk about our roadmap, um, I will talk a little bit uh, about the situation of the software industry when it comes to build infrastructure. And I was thinking how to proper visualize the typical situation of uh, 50 plus developer teams when it comes to their build infrastructure. Right? And uh, I found a very fitting picture. So when I see this, I want to shout, Gradle, and uh, invest into your build. So the current state for the majority of organizations is not very good. Quite a few organizations have started to take sufficient actions to improve. Many take some actions. As always, it is fascinating how people and teams can get used to pain even if it costs them dearly. And they might say, it could be worse. I still can see a little bit and uh, one nose drill is not too bad for breathing. But the future will give the octopus even more arms. So I, I can only warn you with, uh, probably not you, but the industry basically not to invest in this area. So first, the software code bases are growing and growing. We see typical growth rates for some of the large software stacks we are involved with between 20 and 100% per year. So if you have serious problems now with such a growth in a few years, these problems will totally kill you, endanger your very capabilities of shipping software. 20% means twice the size in four years. And, and we see quite a few organizations that are on the brink of losing the capability to shipping software because of their inefficient build infrastructure. And those growth rates also usually means that the teams are growing, making the inefficiencies ever more expensive. So on top of the growing, grow growing code bases, there's another trend. The set of technologies you need to support for creating software is diversifying more and more. What has been a pure Java stack five years ago now is at least a Java, Android, and iOS stack. Probably also JavaScript, maybe some Groovy and Scala on top. And what about native code? Right? And on top, there is the archi architectural change towards a microserver design, uh, which also adds complexity to the built infrastructure. And there's only one way to properly solve this, have a true multi-platform build system that is also a very powerful orchestrator. And this is the very strength of Gradle. Uh, it is the only true multi-platform build system out there. And uh, uh, it is really interesting to look uh, at companies like Prezi or the gaming companies. They are leading the field when it comes to the diversity of their software stack due to their domain. They need to ship very rich local clients for all kinds of different platforms that are combined with rich service layers. So Prezi is presenting how they are using Gradle in such a scenario at uh, 11.30 today. And as I said, every, every talk is recorded, so if you miss one, you will be able to, to watch it in a couple of weeks. So on the other hand, looking at those challenges, there is no question that there is a lot of exciting stuff we can do to make Gradle an even better tool for embracing those current and future challenges. But it will never be a free lunch to have an efficient enterprise built infrastructure. Gradle wants to make this as efficient as possible, but organizations need to invest serious efforts. But it is worth many times. There is hardly another area in software production which has a similar ROI, return on investment, when improving it. So there is an interesting article to, to move to the bright side of life. There's an interesting article from Wired connecting the commercial success of LinkedIn strongly with their investment into their build and delivery infrastructure. Uh, we are very happy that Gradle is an important part of the LinkedIn infrastructure. 
and let's look at one of the things they have achieved. In 2011, it took LinkedIn 30 days to release a new version of their software. This meant that, uh, uh, in average, it took, a feed, uh, it took a finished feature 15 days to reach the, the users. Um, they were in a very functional state compared to the industry standard. Many organizations would be happy if they can say, hey, we release every 30 days when you have a software stack of that size. Right? But they were much more ambitious. They are now able to have at least two releases per day, which means an inventory term for a new feature of half a day. This means they increased, they decreased the inventory term of a completed, completed feature by a factor of 30. This is by all means revolutionary. And if you are competing with an organization that is able to pull this off, and you are not, good luck. Jens is talking about how they are using Gradle tomorrow at 1 p.m. Okay. So, the roadmap. Yeah, we are convinced that Gradle 2.0 is the best build system out there. But we are far from done. We still see ourselves in the base camp preparing for the next big steps to reach the peak of making Cradle the ultimate build system we have always envisioned. And there are some major ingredients missing for that, and uh, we are very happy that we have finally the bandwidth to tackle them. The new, con a new configuration model. This will be the biggest change since the inception of Cradle. We are totally on fire to get this done. Right? Work has started, and this will enable so many amazing improvements. Adam will talk about uh, this in much more detail on Friday morning, right, at 8.30. Uh, and here's the executive summary of what we are going to achieve with this. So, <coughs> zero configuration time. This is driven by two major scenarios. So one is a, a large and very large project. Again, if you look, for example, at the LinkedIn build with their 4,000 sub-projects, uh, uh, Gradle helped them a lot to get a better performance, right? They, they got the build time down with Gradle from four to five hours of their previous end build to 45 minutes compared uh, 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 yeah, with their Gradle build. Uh, but if you're executing a full Gradle build, the time it takes Gradle to configure it and get started is currently a pain in the ass, period. This needs to change, right? And the other scenario is deep IDE integration. So I think Android Studio uh, a Gradle integration is the future of how IDEs should integrate with build systems. And for such a deep integration, the IDE needs to continuously communicate with Gradle. And Gradle currently always needs to execute a non-zero configuration phase to give any answer. And even if this is only one second, it is already a pain in such a scenario. So we want to provide immediate responsiveness, zero configuration time. The Android Studio folks are working at the moment somehow around that with doing some caching by themselves, but uh, this will be the ultimate solution. So, and it will completely eliminate the issues we've just discussed. So that's one, one reason why we, why we introduce a new configuration model and working. First we have to finish it, but then we will introduce it. Um, so there's another important aspect of that. I call it next generation extendability. Cradle sets already the bar when it comes to rich extendability. But the requirements for extendability are also increasing. Let's take, for example, again, the Gradle Android plugin. The Gradle Android plugin is extending Gradle. Then the Android cloud testing providers are creating Gradle testing plugins, extending the Gradle Android plugin. And finally, the organizations using all those plugins also need to do some final customizations in their own Gradle plugins. In such scenarios, our current extendability hooks are pushed to the limits. So uh, after evaluate gets a little bit crowded, uh, and it's hard to enforce a certain configuration order, so the new configuration model will provide a much better toolkit for that. At the moment, cradle parallelization is per sub-project. This is too coarse grained particularly when you look at how Gradle is pushing more and more the concept of variants introduced by Gradle Android, which avoids the unnecessary creation of sub-projects. And now, if you want to have parallelization, you need to go to sub-projects. So that is not uh, uh, how things should uh, 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 be. Uh, additionally, to use the current parallelization, you also have to make sure that the sub-projects are decoupled. 
This is why parallelization is not switched on by default. So after the new configuration model uh, uh, is implemented, we will immediately use that to uh, um, implement uh, task level par parallelization. Uh, and, and once we have implemented that and it's switched on by default, we have Gradle 3.0. Uh, it will be as delicious as the birthday cake for my three-year-old son last month. <laughs> so, and the parallelization will be even more fine-grained than on a task level, but uh, Adam will talk potentially more about that in his talk. So, you might wonder how this will affect compatibility uh, to your existing Gradle builds. So, we take compatibility very, very, very serious. So, we will to continue to support to support the current configuration model for a long time. And additionally, we will provide a way to map the current DSL to the new configuration mo model to enable a step-by-step -step migration. So uh, uh, you have to learn something new once the new configuration model is out there, but you're not forced to switch. You can make the decision yourself. That's uh, what we call controlled change. The benefits of the new configuration model are so outstanding that we think people will move towards it usually very quickly in any case. Okay, that was the new configuration model. The second parallel stream of work will be variant-based dependency management, which is the enabler for a true multi-platform dependency management solution. The group name and version of a library is just not good enough to do proper dependency management, uh, especially not in a native world where you have uh, different architectures, 32 or 64 bit uh, version of the library, compiler types, etc. They all constitute variants of a particular li library that need to be a first class citizen for dependency management. That you, when you resolve the whole dependency, transitive dependency graph, you always get the right variant of the library. The same is true for Android. So we think you can't do any useful dependency management for those domains without modeling variants. But also for other platforms, this is already a platform. With Scala and Groovy, you have the version of the compiler as a variant, as they are not necessarily binary backwards compatible. With Java, you have variants for libraries that want to provide the best possible support for Java 6, 7, and 8. And uh, you can't model that with the current dependency management solution. The classifiers is not the way you can solve that. It's only one dimension and uh, uh, you can't model different uh, transitive dependency graph with, with, with classifiers. So we think this is a major step for dependency management. Des will be talking about the new dependency management capabilities in more detail right after the keynote in a session about native builds with Gradle, correct? You still have some time to prepare the slides now after this announcement, right? So native support. We will continue to invest heavily in the Gradle native support. And this is also very relevant for Android. So if you write native Android extensions using the Android NDK, right now this is supported via make files. We are very excited about uh, that the Google Android team is working on switching the Android NDK support for make files to the Gradle CC++ plugin. So once released, this will turn Gradle immediately into one of the most important CC++ build systems in the world. Gradle is already doing a great job when it comes to caching the build output and building incrementally. Now we want to push this two steps further. Currently, any build output is locally cached per build, right? So if you have two different builds on the same machine, they have two different caches for the build output. The next step for us is to cache the build output locally across builds, similar to how we cache external dependencies. That means it can be reused across different builds, which will be particularly helpful on CI machines. As a next step, this cache will become distributed. That means any build output can be shared across machines. And we really mean any build output, whatever that is that, that you are creating can be shared. So for large enterprise builds, this will be another very nice performance improvement. Uh, and the shared outputs will also include the output of the configuration task. Right? So as part of our zero configuration time, story. Cradleware will also invest heavily into improving the tooling support for Cradle, uh, in particular the Eclipse tooling. So um, all those features will be delivered successively with each minor release. So except for the global cache, 
which might come a little bit later, we're going to finish the major work on all those features before the end of the year. Great away engineering. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> Seriously, you might be thinking that this is a lot of stuff to be done this year. Uh, correct. But uh, uh, two things. Uh, we are now in a situation that we can triple the R&D bandwidth for Gradle open source development. Uh, a key enabler for this are open source partnerships with, we have with some very significant organizations, plus our own econ economic situation. And we are full of energy to solve those problems. We wanted to solve them for a long time. We have a clear idea what to do, and, and work has already started. Um, there will be most likely other cool Gradle stuff be released over the next six months, but that won't be scheduled work like for the other features, so we are not making any promises here. So we might do some interesting stuff with the demon, and uh, yeah, we'll, we will see. So in 2015, we will do the next step again and make Gradle a fully distributed build system with a distributed global cache and the capability to not just run your build in parallel, but also on multiple machines. But the new configuration model is also the foundation for that. So we have a lot of focus uh, uh, on the Cradle core over the next six months. Uh, but uh, the build domain is a domain with infinite requirements and that are constantly changing. So a rich plugin system is key for the capabilities of a build platform like Cradle. And we are very fortunate that the Cradle community created such a rich plugin system already. Uh, and there's outstanding work happening by the Cradle community. I can't wait to see Justin's talk um, this afternoon about the plugins Netflix has created recently. I'm, v I'm particularly interested in uh, uh, locking the dependencies down, right? So a way that even if you have dynamic dependencies, you can, you can persist the, the, the result of a certain resolution process to have reproducible local builds, correct? Yeah. So one thing that has been lacking was a proper home for those plugins. And uh, this is now changing big times. So there are two major announcements. Uh, Justin will also talk this afternoon about the platform Netflix is going to open source and provide as a SaaS offering, correct? OK. <laughs> to make it easy to build, test, and deploy Gradle plugins. Right? So very exciting stuff. And, uh, and here comes the second announcement. Welcome, Luke Daly, who will talk about the new official Cradle plugin portal. Almost perfectly synchronized. <laughs> uh, thank you, Hans. Right, so before we actually, Hans kind of gave away the end game here a little bit. But, um, so what I want to do, it's a bit of a notorious problem in the Gradle ecosystem. One, finding plugins. Two, it, you could say it's a little bit harder to use them than what you might like. There's a little bit too much that you have to type and remember how to do. So what I want to do in, in this project, in some project, is use the Artifactory plugin. I'm publishing the Artifactory. They provide a nice plugin which makes that simpler, and I want to use that. So what I would have to do, well, let me just get this Gradle project going. So brand new Gradle project. And here we are. So if I want to use the Artifactory plugin, what I need to do is type out this block, specify where am I going to get that from. So I'm going to get that from JCenter. If you haven't heard of JCenter, this is Artifactory's or Bintray's equivalent of Maven Central. And I don't know if Fred is here yet, but Fred's going to be talking about Bintray um, tomorrow, I believe. So talking more about that. So I need to specify where I'm going to get this from, and I need to specify, well, what's the actual implementation of this plugin as well. So let's say on my build class path, I want this jar. So here's the dependency notation for the implementation of that plugin. So I have to go and find that somehow. Then I'll say apply plugin artifactory. All right, that's how I get it done today. So now coming with Gradle 2.1, we didn't quite make it with 2.0. I can do this a different way. What I would say is all the plugins that I want to use, the ID, I want to use the J artifactory plugin from JFrog. And that's about right, yes. The version is going to be 2.2.5. Fred? Sure, close enough. So this is what I can do now to specify this is the plugin that I want. That's all I need to do, specify it. It's going to work that out for me. So if I run Gradle Tasks, 
as long as I got that version number right, and I did, here we can see the Artifactory published task from the Artifactory plugin. So now much, much simpler. Yeah, I was hoping for applause for that moment. Yeah, thank you. That's not very much text, but I worked quite hard on that, so thank you. Yeah. All right, so that's very good, but what's actually going on here? Where is this coming from? Well, what's happened? The blue screen isn't the Gradle plugin portal. <laughs> okay, so what's happening here? Behind the scenes, that's making a request to plugins.gradle.org. Right, this is what we're um, letting loose on the world today. This is our new plugin portal, and it serves two purposes. It's a user searchable directory of all the open source plugins out there in the world, and it also backs that mechanism that we saw before. So here is the Artifactory plugin from JFrog. So if I was looking for an Artifactory plugin, I might perform a search for that. Here it is. Have a look. Get a description. Where can I go to get more information about that? Any tags that the authors of this plugin have tagged it with, and some nice copy pastable snippets that I can use to go ahead and do that. So if I'm pre Gradle 2.1, I can use the mechanism that we had before, copy paste that. I'm using 2.1 or later, I can go ahead and use that new, more concise syntax. So we, guess, uh, we can have multiple versions of plugins in here, and you can see already the Netflix guys have been very proactive and got all of the Nebula plugins, which is what uh, Justin is going to be talking about later today. Netflix's plugin suite to aid plugin development are already there, ready to go. There's quite a few in there. If I want to see what plugins are available for doing JavaScript development, I can see the very popular uh, plugin from um, Eric Wendelin is there, and there's a whole bunch of there. So I can search by keyword, search by label, all that kind of thing. If you want to go ahead, so you can start submitting your plugins to this today. There's some instructions here if you follow this link. I'm going to go through that in my talk on the second session today to talk about that. So we're very excited about this. It provides, as I said, two main functions, a central place to go to find what plugins are out there. Because it really is amazing. Uh, we're constantly surprised when people ask us, is there a Gradle plugin to do such and such? We do a search for it, and there usually is out there. There are many, many Gradle plugins scattered across the internet. We're very excited to have a very central authority for all those plugins to be found, and also to make it simpler to find those plugins. And we're really just getting started with this. Making it easy to use those plugins is one thing. We want to provide nice command line support for asking what plugins are available, what plugins have been deprecated, are there new versions of the plugins that I'm using, all of that kind of thing. So make this much more of a first class citizen. And also for the UI itself, at the moment it's very functional. You get some information, uh, some snippets on how to use that. But we want to provide user feedback here. How often is this plugin used? Has this version been deprecated, etc.? Where can I find the documentation? Make this a much richer interface. And also, this is also just the start of what we can do with such a central service. Plugins are one part. There are many other things that your build may depend on for its implementation of build logic. And via a central service, we can answer many more interesting questions via that. So this is just the start of a, of a very interesting stream of work that we're going to be building out over the coming releases. So if you'd like to learn more about that, uh, you come along to my session today on uh, the second slot, I believe. So thank you very much. And uh, please submit your plugins. Oh, thanks. thanks, Luke. Um, so, yeah, not much more to say from my side. One thing is, this will also be uh, uh, finally the enabler that we can shrink the Gradle distribution from this kind of 50 megabyte monster because uh, we would be able to put many. The, the reason why, we, why this distribution is so big is that it is the only way to conveniently. Uh, uh, provide a plugin to make it part of the core distribution. With this mechanism, we don't need to do this anymore and can provide a much leaner Gradle distribution, and then the rest will be automatically retrieved from the Gradle plugin portal. Uh, awesome. Yeah, thanks. Uh, welcome and thanks again for co coming to the Gradle Summit uh, this year, and uh, yeah, enjoy the show. Thank you. <laughs>